Having clean, safe water is obviously essential to life. You can go three weeks without food. I wouldn't want to, tr want to even try that. But three days without water, that's how essential it is. And to be able to have clean, safe water during your apocalyptic experience is absolutely essential. So I'm gonna go through the different steps to see how you can actually take, practically speaking, almost any water source and make it clean and safe. Now we're not talking about water filtration, water filters per se. I will definitely talk about those in a different, in a different video, which will be eye-opening too. It's kind of gonna shock you. But I want you to stay to the end of this one because there's something at the end too that's going to be life-saving. Something about water purification most people don't know. All right, start off with, you're gonna have to have a jug obviously to hold your clean water. We have one of these blue jugs here. Um, they're kind of pricey, but they're great because first of all, they don't let light come in. Secondly, I like it because they have a little spigot on them to be able to pour water out. Um, and they hold five gallons. However, we're very thrifty if you know us at all. We like taking these Hawaiian punch jugs um, for like kids' birthday parties. I know it's not good stuff to have for your kids um, having these Hawaiian punches, but they're tasty, the kids like them, it's a nice theme. And then afterwards we take them and clean them out thoroughly and they become our uh, water storage jugs. This is not the uh, optimal water jug you wanna have, by the way. This one will not let light go through, this one will. Keeping light out of your water is essential. So you can use jugs like this. I wouldn't recommend like a milk carton. They're simply just not sturdy. These ones are sturdy. These ones are very sturdy. But as long as you keep this in a dark place, a very dark place, it'll work just fine. Fine, make sure there's no light. But when it comes to making your water, first of all, you want to be able to put it in here. Let's go ahead and pretend that this pitcher, the water in here came from like a, a local creek or something like that. You want to be able to use this water, but the water right now, absolutely, especially if it came from like a creek or a river, is contaminated with microorganisms. Stuff that if you drink and get inside your digestive tract, it'll make you absolutely sick to the point where you may have diarrhea. And it can be fatal, especially if crap hits the pan. So what we wanna do is take our contaminated jug and make sure you always know which one's which. Here's our clean jug, this one's contaminated, and of course you're never gonna put contaminated water per se into a clean jug. So what you wanna start off with, and of course I'm using a funnel, if your jug's big enough you don't have to use it, just some kind of material. It could be an old t-shirt. I always tell you to save old t-shirts and stuff. This is one reason for it. A washcloth, if you actually have some paper goods, a napkin or paper towel, a coffee filter can work. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push it into the funnel and make it so it's gonna act as a rudimentary filter. When I say rudimentary, obviously it's not gonna stop any microorganisms. Okay, so I can do this all day long and fill up my big jug here, put in five gallons worth, let's say pretend I just did that and now I have five, five gallons in there. The water inside there isn't it gonna have any large particulates because that's what the piece of material did, it stopped the large particles. However, what it's going to have, however, is the microorganisms, they will pass right through. And so even though this is considered to be contaminated or dirty, and this one's considered to be clean, it's still not ready to drink, and that's why we actually have to add some bleach. Now, I have some generic, let's see, Homeline Regular Bleach. And um, you can actually look at the different concentrations. And if you wanna be more specific and be a chemist and look at the concentrations of this, let's see, I know that like times they don't even really put it out there. Here it is. This one's 7.5%. You'll often find, it, find them anywhere from like 6.5% to 8% bleach, 8.5%. I've even seen some of them as low as 4% now. 7.5% is fine. Now, again, if you want to look at the specific percent percentages, you can actually judge how many drops of bleach you need to go into that jug. But I'm going to make it easy on you. Instead of trying to calculate it out, like for example, if it's like 6% concentration, it has to be 8 drops. If it's 8% concentration, it has to be six drops. Forget that, eight drops, how about that, per gallon. So if this were a one gallon jug, we would put in eight drops of bleach into this. But this is five gallons. So obviously we're gonna have to do 40 drops. Now, a quick way to do this, by the way, you can also do a half a teaspoon. A half a teaspoon will do uh, a five gallon jug. Now, just be careful about, about this. Don't grab a teaspoon that you eat your cereal with, it actually has to be something that has accuracy, like a measuring cup. And if you, if you cook or bake at all, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna use a dropper. I have a little micro pipette, a little eyedropper will work. 
Because when it comes to drops, the drops are actually pretty darn close to being completely the same every single time, no matter what you're using it for. So I'm gonna take it right here. There we go, got some bleach in here. Try not to get it on the table or anything. Here we go. So we have to do 40 drops. Do, 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 do. There, there's 40. Okay, obviously I'm not gonna count it through. This is obviously just for demonstration purposes. This, this uh, jug right here is practically already prepared anyway. All right, so what's gonna happen with this is this bleach is, is going to kill off the microorganisms in there. Uh, we're talking about bacteria. We're talking about um, single-celled, multi-celled organisms, giardia, things that will absolutely make us very, very sick. Um, now, as far as the bleach goes, this one says regular bleach. What they mean by that is regular concentrated bleach. You do not want to, in fact, you can't use the gel bleach. Um, you also can't use scented. Like I have a bottle of the same brand of low splash bleach. Low splash means it's the gel bleach. And also this is meadow scent. And also I think it'd be nice to have meadow scented water. That'd be nice, I suppose. Not good for it. So this is great for your clothes per perhaps, or any other purposes, I'm not sure. But it is flat out not good for, for uh, making your water nice and clean. You have to use the regular unscented, concentrated, <laughs> sorry, I don't say concentrated, uh, bleach that has no scents and is not gel or low splash, just regular bleach. And again, we're looking at eight drops per gallon. Now, uh, if you go by the metric system, you're gonna look at for every liter, uh, two drops. Okay, now that's pretty clean water we have here because this came right from a nice clean, clean creek outside. Let's say you actually take a big jug full of water that's kind of cloudy. Depending on the cloudiness, you can actually go more than eight drops, you know, for a gallon. Um, however, you want to go up to, depending on how cloudy it is, if it's very cloudy, you can go up to 16 drops. So actually double the dose of the bleach going into it. So I mentioned before, for a five gallon jug, you could do a half a teaspoon. If this is really cloudy, nasty looking water, even going through the filter, it's still cloudy, just do a full teaspoon. Again, if you're actually doing a liter, it was two drops, but if it's cloudy water, go ahead and do four drops of bleach. The extra bleach isn't gonna hurt you, but again, it will kill those microorganisms. While those microorganisms are alive and they get in your digestive tract, they will wreak havoc on you. But when the bleach kills them and you drink it, it's not gonna affect you at all. In fact, probably a little bit of protein for you, it's good to go. So that's what we're looking at. It's going to turn the alive microorganisms into dead ones, so there's not gonna be any problems with you drinking the water. So now that I've put in five gallons of water, pretend I did, and 40 drops of water, pretend I did, it's best if you actually mix it up a little bit, but at least wait at least a half an hour uh, before you start drinking it, because the bleach will naturally diffuse through the whole jug. And this jug will basically, once I seal it and close it, it's gonna be good forever, forever. Now that's interesting considering, I don't know if you know it, but bleach itself will not last forever. Um, I've heard a lot of people say it'll last a year, perhaps it will. The studies show that it actually has an efficacy of only six months, that's it. And then after that, for every year you keep it on the shelf, it loses 20% of its effic efficacy. So here's the expiration date, it's at 100%. Six months after its expiration date, still at 100%. A year, and a, a year after the expiration date, 20%, or it's at, at, at 80%, and then two years after, 60%, and so on. So once you go past that, it still is effective, just not as effective. So you can actually do the math and calculations too. If you actually have a jug of bleach that's three years old, it's only gonna be at 40%. You can do the math and figure out how many drops it would take at that point, and you can still use it. But you just have to use far more drops for that to happen. Think of it this way. If it's two and a half years after the expiration, you're gonna to have to double the drops. That's one way to look at it. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about something that most people don't know. This creek water right here, although we've taken this contaminated water, decontaminated it, and killed all the bugs in there, that means this water is clean and ready to drink. Is that right? Not necessarily. It killed the microorganisms. But what else is in here? Where did this creek come from? I mean, if it's from a natural spring or under, underground, it's probably gonna be okay. I'm not even saying for sure, because we definitely have nitrates coming from farms and stuff. Or if you actually live in an area where there's a chemical dump, you know, something going into the drinking water, um, the, the creek water, river water, that actually has toxins in them, hazardous materials, 
the bleach is not going to deactivate that. So if you have that in this contaminated water and you pour it in here, granted you kill the microorganisms, if there's any in them in the first place, they're probably dead too, it's still bad water. You have to make sure the water you're taking it from is not contaminated with any stuff. And unfortunately, there's not really any good way to know about that except for possibly looking at the history of a creek. Let's say you're on your property, maybe you have a well and it breaks down, crap hits the fan. You've tested your water before or the EPA's done an analysis of your watershed and it looks fine, you're probably good. But you know, a couple hours from here is Flint, Michigan. That's definitely not something that's the case. You can actually take that water and pour it in here, kill the microorganisms, but the water's still not safe to drink. So don't simply go with, oh, you know what, I put the bleach in there, now I'm good to go, because that may not be the case. In that case, you will need some type of water filter apparatus, which I mentioned before, that's a video coming soon as well. But if you actually have a relatively clean creek source or river nearby that you know does not have any toxic waste or contaminated waste from a plant or something, this method right here will work perfect for you. All right, so I hope that helps out. Um, I want you to go ahead and watch this next video about the top 10 prepper mistakes because there's a lot of things people do who don't really understand how to do this stuff, especially understanding the difference between toxins and microorganisms. All right, but thanks for watching.